This is my second amp from Fosse Audio. The first was the BT20A Pro, and that retailed for 99 US. It was a small palm size amplifier. It was class D. It claimed 300 watts. It had Bluetooth 5.3 and featured tone controls. It was, in my estimation, the perfect budget starter amp. And it just sounded okay. And now I have this, the Fosse MC351. This is a 2.1 integrated amplifier. It has its own DAC. It claims a lofty 165 watts in the 8 ohms with an extra 350 watts for the subwoofer outputs, which we'll get to that. But it also has Bluetooth and tone controls, and it steps up with optical in, a USB-C in, pre-out, the aforementioned subwoofer speaker line level outs, and a VU meter. I'm going to cut to the chase. Fosse Audio asked me if I wanted to review another amplifier from them, and I saw this one listed, and it had a VU meter, and I love VU meters, and I don't have anything with a VU meter in-house, so I was like, yeah, let's, let me get that one. And they obliged, they sent it over, and when you see it in photos, especially with these Chi-Fi amplifiers, like, you have like, okay, it looks good in photos, but that might be a 3D rendering, and then when you see like the product on white, you're like, eh, doesn't look that good. But when I got this thing unboxed, I immediately fell in love with it. It is a small integrated amplifier, but it's like an all aluminum black chassis. It's got rounded off corners on the front. It's got like the view meter and then indicator lights and like a sideways smiley face, a mode button, there's tone controls and that beautiful orange knob on the front. It just looks so smart. It looks great on your desk. It looks great on a shelf. And then I got it set up. And like, that's kind of when things fell apart. And like, I felt like maybe I was a bit too harsh with the BT-28 Pro where like, yeah, it, like it worked and it had a sufficient power, but like, it didn't sound overly great. And this has the same Texas Instruments, like what is the chip name? 3255 chip in it and like, it sounds okay, but the same like thing is apparent where like the mids just feel a little bit recessed in it and you kind of have to just fudge with the bass and treble to kind of figure out that missing sort of sound. And you get sort of there, but not really. But what was really weird with this amplifier is like it's an integrated amplifier. So it's got the built-in DAC and like the DAC kind of sucks. Like I, used to always say is like, I can't really tell the difference between DAX, but like on this thing, you could totally hear it. Like it doesn't sound very articulate. It doesn't sound good. And even like to like novice ears, like up top, like the upper registers of music, just kind of sounds sibilant and kind of, eh, it doesn't sound very good. And that rings true for like music coming in via USB-C off of my MacBook Pro. Not only does it not sound great, but like, yeah, it comes through as fairly sibilant. And I know this because on my desk, I also have the DAC Magic 200M from Cambridge Audio. And when I go RCA outs out of that into this, music sounds better. And that's what I do on my desk with this amplifier. So I almost wish that this wasn't an integrated amplifier. I just wish it was a straight amplifier because it works well for that. And I feel all the extra stuff in it is kind of like just tossed in it for like marketing sake or something. Like it doesn't do Fosse any favors, like just having like a kind of crappy integrated amp. Like they could probably take some of this functionality out of this, like take out the DAC and just have like it be a VU meter amplifier. Cause I'm smitten with the way this thing looks just not smitten with the sound. They claim 165 watts of power for this amplifier, and I wish they would stop doing this. I wish they would just, even just underrate their amplifiers, just say it's 60 watts a channel, and then we could all be surprised by, hey, it's got more power than 60 watts. But like, it's not coming anywhere close to 165 watts of power, especially with the supplied power supply. Like it's a 32 volt power supply, it's not gonna give you max output. You would have to buy a, 
a separate 48 volt power supply, I believe from their website to maybe come close to those numbers, but you can quickly search this amp on Google and you can come across people doing power tests and it doesn't even cut it. I think some of them were just like at 80 watts and that was it. So yeah, don't please stop inflating your power numbers. It's not doing you any favors. Around the back, you get a whole host of connections. You get a pre-out, Bluetooth antenna, RCA in, coax in, optical in, USB-C in, and then you also have speaker out and then speaker level subwoofer outputs for use with a passive subwoofer, which first, I don't know the last time I've seen a passive subwoofer, but also you can't control volume with these. So like, who's, who would use this? Uh, Fossey, just take these off and save money. Like, and then with my earlier comments of nothing digital sounding good through the internal DAC on this, like just don't use any of the digital connections because it's not going to sound very good. Like Bluetooth in a pinch, maybe if you just want to hear something. But what I use this amplifier for, for the most part on my desk is to listen to like YouTube or podcast through it while I'm working. I don't really like the way music sounds through it. And I have another system in my office here to listen to music with. So like, that's my use case for this amplifier. And like, if music doesn't sound awesome through it and like the DAC doesn't sound great either, that like, I feel like most people would just use this for what I use it for. And in that case, like the VU meter is nice and I like it, but like, I feel like Fosse could have maybe just saved themselves some bad press and just stripped this amplifier down to just an amplifier and then just lower the power number so you can just like take it for what it is like 60 to 80 watts of power tone controls volume control and look i do feel bad doing these reviews like it's now been two amplifiers from fossi that i've gotten that i haven't been overly jazz with but this one like it's not great but like i am completely smitten with the looks of this thing like i'm looking at it right now that's why i keep looking over there like it looks great on my desk I'm not gonna move it off my desk because it looks so good and I like turning it on. Like the orange wheel on it is like a click on volume control and like, I love the way it looks on my desk, but it's just for like kind of day-to-day -day casual office use. It's not like a, it's an accessory to my desk versus being like a wonderful amplifier on my desk. I'm not going to tell you not to buy it like for north of a hundred bucks. Here's the actual price on screen here for an accessory for your desk. That looks great. And also it is somewhat functional. I'm not going to tell you not to buy it. It's staying on my desk for the foreseeable future because it looks great. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, sorry, Fossey. Uh...